Uh, good afternoon. Hello and welcome to uh, uh, the Sunday afternoon uh, live stream session here at the VegFest Eco Summerfest Online 2020. The first time we've been doing an online event. And um, thank you very much if you're just joining us live. Uh, thank you for joining the session. Um, and this will be recorded. It's being recorded. It will be available later to view on the event platform. Uh, the event platform stays open for another month. So up until around September 15th, uh, you'll be able to drop back and review the, uh, this panel. Um, or indeed, uh, invite your friends along to view. Of course, it's all for free. And we are exceptionally grateful for all our panels, for the individuals who are giving up their time, expertise and knowledge for free um, to, to really help uh, a broader vegan community in a whole variety of aspects, but particularly with some inspiration and some encouragement, a sort of commun community-based uh, enthusiasm for continuing grassroots and national uh, vegan activism campaigns and the all important part of course of welcoming in people new to veganism and new to plant-based diets we've had some terrific um, sessions that have been you know in part uh, geared towards this but this particular session here today uh, the new vegan support um, hosted by the vegan approach is uh, really absolutely tailor-made for people who are yet to go vegan or yet to uh, adopt a plant-based diet or lifestyle choices um, and i'm very very grateful for the the team for the enthusiasm commitment they've shown to putting together the panel it's it is quite a lot of work behind the scenes um, and uh, particularly grateful too for our panelists who are joining us too so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to the very capable hands of Rob, Rob Masterson, who will be hosting the panel, The Vegan Approach, and uh, no doubt introducing the rest of our participants today. So thank you, Rob. Thanks very much, Tim, and, and, and thanks for hosting us uh, in VegFest. So uh, yeah, there's uh, just the four of us here today, um, and I think we'll start with quick introductions and uh, a bit about ourselves and um, so ju just going around my screen if we, if we start with Izzy who's here from Animal Aid uh, would you like to introduce yourself Izzy and also just say how long you've been vegan and uh, what was sort of the uh, decision point and when you went vegan what what made you make that transition to veganism of course, no problem. Thank you, Rob, and thank you so much um, for inviting me onto the panel. I'm really excited to be here. So my name's Isabel Hutchinson. I'm the director of Animal Aid. So that's one of the UK's largest and longest established animal rights organisations. We campaign peacefully against all animal cruelty and promote cruelty-free living. So of course, a really key part of what we do is encouraging people to go vegan and providing practical support for doing that. So a little bit about me, myself, I've been vegan for about eight years now and for me the, the powerful motivation was animal suffering and wanting to do as much as I possibly could to help animals. I've always sort of thought of myself as an animal lover and been really committed to helping animals um, and for many years since I was a teenager I stopped eating meat but unfortunately I continued eating fish for quite a long time because I sort of assumed that there was less cruelty involved in um, the fishing industry, which of course I've since found out is sadly not the case. Um, but the reason that I sort of decided to go vegan is I, I learned more about the animal farming industries. Uh, I started working for an animal welfare organisation and that led me to learn a lot more about animal farming and the various sort of um, processes that were involved in that and particularly um, about dairy and eggs which I'd previously assumed were cruelty free and made a big effort to buy free range eggs and so on but then obviously learning a lot more about it I realised that sadly that's not the case. 
Um, so yeah, that started me on sort of the vegan journey um, and I, I haven't looked back, obviously working for Animal Aid, I've learned a huge amount more about sort of the, the um, issues involved with animal agriculture and of course I'm completely committed to being vegan, but I'm, I'm really passionate about sort of supporting um, and helping people to make that transition and looking forward to hopefully um, contributing some practical advice today. Lovely, thank, thank you very much uh, Ize. And, and yourself, Sam, uh, just a bit about yourself and, and what motivated you to become vegan and uh, how long you've been vegan. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me along today. Um, very much looking forward to uh, the discussion today. Um, I'm Head of Communications at the Vegan Society. I've been there for about uh, three years in that role. Um, I became vegetarian actually back in the 1980s and it was 10 years before I became vegan. Uh, which in that period wasn't particularly uncommon, although I think these days most people make that transition much more swiftly, if mm. not become vegan overnight. Um, what motivated me to go from being vegetarian to being um, vegan, I, I suppose I'd tried a couple of times, but it was quite difficult um, in that period um, to, to make those changes. But um, I finally managed it um, as a New Year's resolution, in fact. The only one I think I've ever kept, um, which was that I would cut down on dairy products and eggs and animal products during the next 12 months and become fully vegan by New Year's Day the following year. And I swapped things, you know, um, item by item. Obviously, I was motivated by animal rights to do that, um, as I think everyone in that period was, really. Um, the concept of health veganism was a, a very American notion. I don't think um, British vegans in that period were, were ever vegan for any other reasons than rights of animals or animal welfare. Um, and um, I think I was uh, fortunate at the time that I happened to work in a uh, worked for the vegetarian society where they had a cookery school and were able to teach um, vegan cookery. So I was greatly supported really in being vegan. Um, and that was probably my third attempt at being vegan and I, I managed it. Today I'm happy to say that thanks to organisations like the Vegan Society and um, a lot of other organisations like Animal Aid and, and um, other animal rights organisations, including Veganuary, there's a lot of support out there um, for new vegans. So I think um, no one should hopefully have to wait 10 years to make that. Yeah. Well, I, th I, think, I think we lost Sam there slightly. I think she'd probably finished, I think. Actually. Yeah, I think, I think uh, she was wrapping up. Yeah, and, yeah. and then, uh, well, uh, yourself, please. Um, well, I'm a volunteer with The Vegan Approach, uh, along with Rob and uh, Chrissy, who you can't see here today. Um, and I've been uh, a vegan for about 15 years. It took me about nearly a year to go vegan. So I was a vegetarian before that, and I sort of did it very slowly. Um, and transitioned quite slowly because I wanted to make sure that I was getting all of the nutrients I needed. But I haven't actually eaten meat or fish for about, I was adding it up earlier, it's about 46 years now. So it's quite a while. So when people sort of talk about the taste of meat, I haven't really got a clue. I can't remember what it's like. Um, I went vegan, as I said, nearly 15 years ago, and I don't like everybody else who's gone vegan. I don't know why it took me so long. I was a vegetarian for years and I just sort of didn't see what was happening in the dairy and egg industries. And then I started to do some campaigning um, with some animal rights groups in Manchester. And I actually found out a lot more about what happened to, to baby calves and chicks. And I thought, how can I have been supporting this? And why, why doesn't everybody know about this? Um, so that's why I decided to go vegan and I haven't looked back. I think one of the things I was worried about was sort of um, that I wouldn't have a, you know, a variety of things to eat. Uh, and like many vegans, I think what you do is you tend to sort of eat a wider variety of things, don't you, than before you went vegan, because you sort of experiment with lots of different foods. Um, so I haven't really looked back. Um, just going back to what I do for the vegan approach, I, I do talks at festivals mostly, and obviously those haven't been happening this year, um, which is a great pity because I really enjoy those. Um, so this is why we sort of got involved with, with VegFest. Um, and hopefully when the world sort of gets back to normal again, um, we'll be able to sort of go around doing talks at, at real sort of festivals, real live festivals. But um, it may be that the online sort of approach is here for quite a while still. Thank you, please. Yeah. And, and then just 
finally from myself, I've, I've been vegan uh, just over seven years now. Uh, I went vegan in February 2013. And uh, mine was a transition from being vegetarian uh, to vegan. And I watched a screening of a film called The Peaceful Kingdom, which is quite a few years old now, but it was screened at my uh, local uh, animal rights group, Extra Friends for Animals. And uh, really seeing that film was, was compelling and, and the transition for me was, was really uh, overnight. And, um, and I thought, you know, it was, uh, uh, it, it was quite an easy transition from what I saw. Uh, I think it's far easier as well now as, as time has gone by seven years ago, sort of eating out and shopping and things that we're going to talk about today were a lot more difficult. So I think uh, it, it is a lot easier. From my own perspective, I feel it's a lot easier for people to make that final transition, uh, which, which takes us nicely onto uh, one of our subjects. And, and we do the uh, six steps to vegan, and we, we tend to concentrate on finding your motivation. And hopefully we've covered that uh, between, between the four of us already. Uh, our next step is about uh, deciding what to eat and, um, and also recipes. So uh, perhaps, uh, Sam, for yourself, have you got any suggestions or favourite foods or dishes or any resources that perhaps the Vegan Society can help people with deciding what to eat and any recipes or, or guides that you've got um, yeah, certainly. Um, I think this is one of the things that a lot of new vegans really worry about. Um, and um, people often say to me, oh, I think I'd probably be vegan more if I could decide what to eat. Um, but actually, there's, there's a huge resource out there um, on the internet. And I think one of the simplest things to do is, is to think about what you'd normally eat. And if the answer to that is um, cottage pie, then typing into, into Google vegan cottage pie will bring up thousands of recipes, literally probably tens of thousands of recipes. And the difficult thing will be deciding which one suits you best or which one you think is probably most likely to have been recipe tested and therefore work. Um, because I'm a great believer that if a recipe doesn't work, it's probably the recipe's fault, not yours, which I think is a huge comfort. <laughs> so I'd certainly recommend um, starting with what you, you already eat and looking for an alternative because there's an alternative to pretty much everything nowadays. Um, it, it's, it's, it's not very difficult to find recipes. We do have a huge resource on, on our own website um, at the Vegan Society. That's vegansociety.com where you can find a whole bank of recipes that are searchable by sort of meal type. Um, but um, as I say there, but a small example of the huge number of um, recipes out there. I think the other good bit of advice for someone who's new to veganism is probably having a, a good recipe book to hand that they can, a sort of complete recipe book where they can look something up by ingredient um, and decide, you know, this is what they've got in their fridge today or what they've got in their store cupboard and what can they make with that? Because that often leads you in a different direction to something more interesting than you might have made if you only rely on the dishes you've always cooked and try and find a vegan alternative. One of the great joys about being vegan, I think, is, is realising all the things you perhaps didn't eat. People feel they might be giving up a lot, but actually what you get back is often greater than what you give up. Yeah. Um, and I know that I eat differently today from what I would have done if I had grown up eating the food that my family did um, in adulthood. You know, I would have had a much more limited diet. And I think that's, that's one of the, the real joys of veganism. Yeah. Um, and I think the other the other tip is probably about cooking from scratch, which will always be um, cheaper and probably healthier as well, because you can control what you cook. Not everyone's got the time to do that. Lots of ready meals available in supermarkets if that's what you need. But um, cooking from scratch will generally um, give you more variety and be a lot cheaper. And uh, of course, um, also provide you with a way of controlling what you eat. We've got a great new section on our website called um, Live Vegan for Less, which is very budget friendly. It was actually created during lockdown to help people. And I think that's a really good resource for, for anyone who's struggling financially at this time. And I know there are a lot of people in that situation right now. Thank you. That's, that's great. And, and yourself, is it any, any suggestions for what to eat or have you actually got a favourite dish yourself? Yeah, I think um, Sam's already provided some really good advice there. I, I would echo all of that. Um, in terms of, yeah, the resources that Animal Aid can specifically provide, uh, we also do a digital vegan pack, which is available at animalaid.org.uk forward slash vegan pack. Um, and that's been adapted for lockdown as well, so that that's um, all sort of digitally available now. Um, I think it's absolutely right about sort of um, Googling the various options for recipes you would normally cook. And I think it's worth 
worth saying as well that sometimes in the very early days you might not even need to think about a completely different recipe so for example um, if you would normally have sort of you know sausages vegetables and some potatoes or something in the early days you might want to literally just substitute uh, a vegan sausage for your meat-based sausages so particularly at the beginning um, although it's a brilliant opportunity to sort of discover new foods and new styles of cooking when you're getting started you might want to just keep it really simple in terms of swapping the products you would usually have for vegan alternatives. Um, I think also signing up to take part in um, an organised initiative, whether it's one run by Animal Aid, Vegan Society or Veganuary, can be really good because that always provides you lots of sort of recipes and information and really just sort of supports you all the way through um, and saves you having to do that research for recipes yourself. They'll send you lots of recipes, which is really positive. Um, in terms of recipes that I like myself, um, I've always found the Jack Monroe blog to be really good and also very budget friendly. Not all of the recipes on there are vegan, but it has a really clearly marked vegan section um, and they're super sort of quick and easy and budget friendly. So I've always found that a really useful resource. That's good. Yeah. And, and, and anything else? For, th thanks, uh, Isa. Any, anything from you, Liz, two, two really good good answers from Sam and Izzy. Um, well, I would say that we do have some recipes on the Vegan Approach website, but not, uh, you know, nowhere near as many as the larger organisations do. Um, we often promote uh, Viva's Vegan Recipe Club as well, which is a website with uh, hundreds of different recipes on. And you can search for ones that are easy or more complicated, recipes for breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, so there's lots of different ways you can actually sort of limit the recipes that you get back. So I've tried quite a few of those and those are good. Um, but on the whole, I tend to make up recipes as I go along. I look at recipe books and then me personally, I just sort of improvise and just add anything really, basically try different things. Um, my latest one on Friday was a mango and red chili pepper uh, pizza, which worked out quite well. Actually, it sounds bizarre, but uh, just bought some tin mangoes from the co-op uh, and some chilies and just added a little bit of vegan cheese and I'd spread some passata on. And that was a really quick um, pizza recipe. Um, and I think one of the things that I tend to do often is cook like double the amount so that I can have the next portion the next day or I can freeze something as well which I think is actually quite a useful tip. So you don't have to put the effort in twice yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I mean, my own personal likes really are sort of anything Italian. Um, so pasta, pizza, anything like that. Yeah, and I tried to make it as whole food as possible. Yeah, yeah, thank you. What about I, you? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not the chef in a household, so... Uh, um, I, I was tempted to skip over this, but we, we do do uh, we, we do uh, cook from from scratch, and, and also during this this time we have been uh, batch cooking as well and freezing a lot. But we do tend to eat. Always say in, in my talks to people, don't forget those first aisles when you go into mm. the supermarket. You know, the fresh fruit and veg aisles. So uh, whilst there are some good vegan uh, alternatives out there, and some good vegan junk food, uh, just don't forget that. Uh, which really brings us on to our, our next subject, which is around nutrition. And whilst we can't give uh, any specific nutritional advice, uh, would you have one particular nutritional tip for somebody that's looking to, to go vegan? And, and perhaps starting with you, yourself, Liz, any, anything in particular? Um. Well, I just I would just say um, basically try to make your diet as whole food as possible. But um, I tend to advocate sort of like the 80 20 rule. So if 80 percent of the time you're eating whole foods, that still allows you 20 percent of the time to have sort of treats, you know, like vegan ice cream and burgers, etc. Um, so concentrate on the whole foods mostly. Um, and if you're having a wide variety of, of whole foods, the only thing, the main thing that you need to sort of think about on top of that is B12. Um, but I don't know whether anybody else wants to come back and comment on that. Sam or Izzy, have you got any comments on, on that? I mean, I think um, Liz's comment about B12 is really important. Um, and I know that a, a lot of um, new vegans aren't perhaps aware of its importance. It's the only critical vitamin that isn't naturally available on a vegan diet. Um, so it's not something that we naturally find on our food. 
often you will see stories online about suggestions that certain foods do contain B12, uh, plant foods do contain B12. The research data suggests that, that none of those sources are stable enough for human beings to be able to absorb the B12. So it's important if you do read those things, perhaps um, in, in Facebook groups where someone says, oh, you don't need to worry about supplementing B12. The sources of B12 have not been proved to be stable enough. At the Vegan Society, we've always recommended that people either make sure that they're eating enough fortified foods that contain B12. So that's using things like uh, plant milks, like soya milk, where the B12 vitamin has been added to it, or that they take a, v a B12 um, vitamin tablet, which you can do in a combined vitamin tablet, things like Veg1 from the Vegan Society, or you can take just a separate B12 tablet. There's good guidance on our website at vegansociety.com on B12 about how to make sure that you're getting enough. But um, it, it's absolutely critical if you're going to remain vegan for a period of time that, that you get enough B12. Um, you do have B12 stores. They'll last somewhere between maybe 12 months and up to perhaps 15 years, but you don't know how long your personal store is. So you will find vegans who say, I've been vegan for you know, 12 years. I've never bothered about fortification and I'm doing absolutely fine. I've had my B12 checked and I'm okay. They're lucky they had a long store but don't rely on that. The best advice is to supplement B12. And it's really important because a lack of B12 may, is a very serious matter and it's, it's important, not only for your own health, but also for the reputation of veganism that, that everybody is, is healthy and happy on a vegan diet. Yeah. And, and is there any, anything to add uh, in terms of nutritional tips from yourself? I think um, probably the most important aspects have already been covered, but I think the overarching comment I would say is just sort of make sure that you do your research um, when you're looking to go vegan. It's obviously completely possible and really quite straightforward to get all the nutritional needs that you need on a vegan diet, but it is obviously important to make sure that you're aware of those. Um, a vegan diet isn't going to automatically be healthy. Obviously, a, a diet consisting of sort of uh, white bread and chips would technically be vegan, but isn't going to be very healthy. So do um, take some time to do some research and the vegan guide has a section on nutrition uh, which just sort of sets out all the main um, vitamins minerals and and so on proteins and so on that you need and how you can get all of those which sources um, are best for those which foods contain them and obviously there are lots of similar resources provided by other organizations too so I think it's just about sort of making sure that you do some research and some planning um, just to make sure that you're confident that you are going to be getting everything that you need so that you're going to be healthy and as Sam said we can continue to all sort of be a healthy um, group of vegans and make sure that, that positive reputation continues. Thank you, Izzy. Um, Can I just put, come back in, Rob, um, just on nutrition? Because I want, we often talk about, uh, amongst vegans about, you know, oh, you need to make sure you get this, you need to make sure you get that. Um, what I don't think everybody realizes is that an awful lot of people um, who are not vegans uh, don't get enough of certain nutrients. And, and one of them, although it's not classed as a nutrient, is fiber. So most people in this country don't get enough fiber in their diet and fiber is only available from plants. It's not available in animal foods. And the research is now starting to show us that it's actually really, really important, not just for um, protecting us against bowel cancer, but also for sort of mental health as well uh, and for our immune system. So I think um, as well as saying, oh, yes, we need to get B12, we need to get calcium, etc. I think we should sort of celebrate the things that we're actually as vegans uh, that we don't have any problems getting in our diet and, and there are other things such as folic acid uh, and some other B vitamins as well that we tend to get far more of than than non-vegans do so I just wanted to come in on that one yeah we've, we've also got uh, in our area video haven't we uh, presentation mm. that you've done as well um, on, on nutrition so uh, if people want to look at that uh, our next subject is, and, and people say to me, well, surely it must be difficult to eat out. And I travel, I used to travel a lot for business and uh, probably seven years ago, uh, it, it, it was difficult to eat out. Uh, I think it's becoming easier. Um, is, there, is there anything, any tips or guides uh, perhaps that Sam, you could recommend? Uh, or do the Vegan Society have any resources on um, on, on eating out and also probably nowadays more so in, in takeaways as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, again, I think often people think that um, being new to veganism, it might be the, um, 
one of the really difficult things and that life will become quite a misery um, when you're eating out or it will inconvenience perhaps friends or relatives that you're eating out with. There's a wonderful resource online called um, Happy Cow if you haven't come across it. And um, that's, that's a, been around for quite some years now. It's, a, it's very much um, user, generated, user content generated. So people leave reviews there of, of places that are either completely vegan or vegetarian um, or indeed omnivorous but cater for vegans. And that's all over the world as well. So it, it's a really fabulous, if you just type in Happy Cow on Google, it will come up and that will give you a, a, a great selection of places. Um, it's usually fairly reliable because so many people are using it. So it is getting updated quite regularly. And they do point out when they are needing some more information on something. But it's, it's great added to something like TripAdvisor where again, um, you know, TripAdvisor these days will allow you to actually search for places that are vegan or cater for vegans. Um, and generally speaking, I think I, I always tend to look, if I'm in a strange place, I, t I will look for Indian restaurants, Thai restaurants, where they're more likely to be able to cater for vegans if there's no um, exclusively vegan establishment around. Yeah. Um, I've always found Italian restaurants can cope as well. If, if they haven't got a vegan menu, if you explain what you don't eat, it's usually fine. Another great resource is probably the Vegan Passport, which is available both as an app or as a, a printed booklet from the Vegan Society. That's basically a resource um, that translates a definition of what vegans eat into every language pretty much on the planet. And um, there's an illustrated guide of, of sort of symbols for if the language isn't there. So wherever you're going in the world, you can explain to a restaurateur, this is what I need to eat. And I All have right. found when I've used that and sent it into a kitchen, Often, if there's a language barrier, what comes out is still amazing and you can eat it. So it's well worth, well worth trying. And that, that's, that's available through the Vegan Society. From the yeah. Vegan Society shop, yeah. yeah. And, and yourself, Izzy, and any, any tips that uh, Animal Aid or, or yourself would have in terms of eating out and, and in restaurants and takeaways? Yeah, so I guess to, to add what um, Sam said there, I think there are so many major restaurants now that are sort of chain restaurants and so on that are either doing vegan menus or have really well signposted good vegan options. So that ranges from sort of Zizi, Pizza Express, Wagamama, even sort of places you probably wouldn't choose to go to as a vegan like Nando's. But if you do end up there with friends and family, they do actually have vegan options, ironically. Um, so it's easier than ever really uh, when eating out to, to be able to either ask for the vegan menu you or you'll see that there are really clearly signposted vegan options which is really positive um i think in terms of takeaways they're obviously getting better and better with chains like um for example papa john's pizza is now offering vegan cheese which is really positive also with the sort of the local independent ones um i personally found that if you just explained at the beginning that um you're vegan and you'd sort of you know you'd like them to make sure that there are no animal products contained in anything that you're ordering um i found that to be a, re a really successful option as well and i found that now that there's so much awareness of veganism and what that means people are very easily able usually to sort of adapt any dishes that might contain any animal products normally to make sure that they're suitable for you um so i think finally i guess if you're in a situation where you can't find any sort of obviously vegan options and you, you don't have access to any sort of chain restaurants or perhaps your friends and family have organized a trip to just sort of an independent restaurant that doesn't seem to have any vegan options i think a good sort of overall tip is probably to phone up in advance to explain your needs and to just try and talk to the staff about what they might be able to do for you and then obviously that just helps to sort of smooth things over and hopefully you won't have that kind of um, potentially awkward situation when you turn up and there doesn't seem to be anything for you to eat because you will have organized it in advance so i think that can be a useful tip too so, so planning's really sort of essential i know that we used to ring up restaurants beforehand if we were going out for meals but to restaurants that weren't vegan and explain that and they're generally very helpful aren't they Definitely. I mean, I think these days it's probably rare that you would need to do that because I think in most towns you're either going to have a chain with a vegan yeah. option or um, a type of restaurant with cuisine that's very easily adaptable, like Indian and Thai and Italian. Um, but if you really are sort of like going to somewhere perhaps very rural with just a couple of options, um, then yeah, I think that that good old kind of phoning and advance can still work. But hopefully these days it is a lot rarer to have to use that approach. Thank you. And, and, and Liz, anything from yourself just to round up on, on eating out and takeaways? Well, 
I would just agree with everything everybody said. Um, I think I've, it's probably been mentioned, but it's possible, you know, check online first if you possibly can, just to see what there is, because that's always worth doing. And sometimes you might go somewhere and you don't get given a vegan menu, so you might have to ask for the vegan menu, because they don't always give it you and you think, oh, well, they haven't got vegan options, but they've got a menu hidden away. So I would say always ask for a vegan menu. Um, I'd watch out for one or two things, possibly with Thai, you know, just make sure that they're not using any fish, for instance, and it's worth actually just saying that to them. Um, but as everybody said, it's so much easier now than it was when, when I first became a vegan and people said, what's vegan? So you, you know, most people do know that now. So that, that's actually quite good. Um, I'm quite lucky because I live um, near Hebden Bridge and we've got quite a lot of places around here that um, do vegetarian, um, that are vegetarian, that do vegan options or that are actually solely vegan. So that's great. So I tend to go to the places I know. Um, the only other thing I would say is, um, and I'm going to say it possibly later on when we talk about support, is your local groups are actually really, really helpful because you get information on social media about places to eat that do great vegan options. Um, and I just found one recently uh, in Halifax, which I hadn't considered, which was an Indian, which has a huge extensive vegan menu and everybody said that's really good. And I wouldn't have known about that if it wasn't for Facebook. So yeah, yeah, yeah. local groups are very helpful as well. Yeah. So a suggestion to people if they are traveling, I, and I found it through uh, when I was in the East Midlands of working away and, uh, and through the local Facebook group, I actually found their eating out guide for Nottingham as well. So that's, uh, mm. that's a good local resource. We, we also talk about uh, vegan lifestyle uh, quite a lot. And whilst we say you don't become more vegan, we think that you really become more conscious about your decisions that you make. And uh, subjects sort of include uh, animal testing, uh, charities perhaps, uh, and medical research. So, so maybe a uh, question uh, to yourself, Izzy, uh, what sort of uh, resources are available through, through animal aid? I know that there's, there's perhaps a, a list of charities that don't do and don't test on animals. Could you perhaps explain to uh, people that are in, in the webinar what, uh, what that involves and the basis of that and where to find that? Yeah, of course. So obviously there are lots of issues to think about when you go vegan. You start with sort of the diet, but then as you kind of get to know about it more, um, you're likely to start thinking more about other ways you can modify your lifestyle to try and make sure you're living as cruelty free a life as possible, which is really positive. Um, and one of the things you might want to think about is the charities that you're donating money to. So unfortunately, some of the major medical research charities like Cancer Research UK and the British Heart Foundation do actually fund animal experiments and that's obviously um, an ethical problem for two reasons firstly because of the suffering it causes to animals but also because of the scientific problems with that because of all the species differences between people and animals the results from animal experiments just aren't reliable and can't be reliably translated to people so it's actually not a good approach scientifically and is likely to result in in misleading results that actually end up potentially harming people or resulting in sort of important medical developments being discarded because they don't appear effective in animals um, so at Animal Aid we've done quite a lot of work over the years in terms of um, collating information about which charities do and don't fund animal research because obviously it's medical research is a really important thing that a lot of people are likely to want to support and they want to know how to do that in a cruelty free manner. So if you have a look on our website you can find um, there are various options there. There's a list online of the charities, um, common medical research charities and it's clearly colour coded in green and red as to which ones do and don't fund animal experiments um, and that's also an option there to download a smartphone app which is called cruelty free giving you can search for that in um, the the, um, the various different app stores and you should find that there um, we also traditionally do a, a pocket guide as well although that's not available at the moment due to our office being closed through lockdown but you can still find all the information that you need online uh, you can find that if you go to animalaid.org.uk forward slash go forward slash charities 
um, and you'll find all the information there and you can hopefully make a, a positive decision then. There are lots and lots of charities that don't fund animal research um, and you can pick one um, that will enable you to sort of support that important cause but without causing any animal suffering. Lovely, that really comprehensive. Thank you, Izzy. And, and from the Vegan Society, Sam, are, are there any um, resources that can help people uh, give to charities that perhaps more align with their, their newer values and, and beliefs as, as vegans? Um, yeah, we, we would um, always recommend that people look out for the Vegan Society's um, registered trademark. Um, that's the sunflower symbol with the word vegan um, underneath it that you see on food packaging um, and also on increasingly on other products as well but also on cosmetics and toiletries and so on. Um, the Vegan Society symbol doesn't only confirm that the Vegan Society staff have checked that the product is suitable for vegans because of its ingredients, um, but also there's a check um, that the co company hasn't tested the product, the finished product on animals, or indeed that any of the companies that supply ingredients um, to that company also haven't tested on animals if they have effective control over that company. So as far as we can, we, we're checking back through the chain to make sure that um, any, wherever there's effective control, that there's no animal testing taking place. So you can use the symbol not only as a guide that a product is vegan, but also that it hasn't been tested on animals um, by that company. Um, similarly, in a way, I suppose things like the looping bunny, which, um, which also indicate that animal, things haven't been tested on animals, but those products aren't necessarily vegan. So you okay. could have a product containing milk that would still have the leaping bunny, whereas ours would confirm doubly the, the animal testing status and also the, um, the fact that the product's vegan. Okay, thank you, Sam. And anything from, from yourself, Liz? Um, just to sort of add in, it's also worth thinking about clothes as well. And um, we tend to sort of, you know, often leave that a little bit later on, like uh, Isabel said about, you know, food comes first. Um, but it's sort of finding things that, you know, aren't leather, because leather seems is quite ubiquitous. I think um, it's sort of, you tend to find it not only in shoes, but in belts. And also they're putting it in cars now, which was a latest bugbear of mine, because I was trying to, thinking about maybe I need a new car, trying to find one that didn't actually have a um, leather inside. It was quite difficult. Um, but there, somebody somewhere has done work on this because when I was looking at um, a leather free car, I thought, all right, I'll just Google this. So somebody else has put together a list of um, vegan cars or cars that can be as vegan as possible. Um, so don't sort of think, oh, well, I don't know where to find something like was sort of said earlier on, you know, just Google something. Somebody else has probably looked into it um, and done, done the work for you. Um, so I wouldn't actually recommend, it's up to people's individual taste really, I wouldn't recommend people just chuck out all of their clothes and just get brand new ones. A lot of people just tend to use things up and then buy vegan versions of things, but that's personal taste. Um, the only thing I'd, I would add to what Isabel said is, uh, is about animal free research as um, an organization that only tests um, supports research that doesn't test on animals so that's a really great organization as well it used to be called adopt hardwin trust so if you do yeah. want to sort of give um you know a donation to something that's 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 a pretty good organization um so yeah that, that's that's what i'd say as well lovely thank, thank you Liz. and then a final subject when when we do our six steps to vegan is is around uh, support and uh, we noticed there's the V guide that uh, the Vegan Society have got, Sam. Would you just like to explain to everybody how that can help people uh, through the transition in, into veganism? Yeah, certainly. It's, it's very much based on our um, vegan pledge, which we ran for many years, uh, which is a sort of, um, the, I suppose, the original veganuary. Um, the idea of signing up to an email um, list where every day for 30 days you'd get an email from the society that explained um, how to go vegan and um, gave you advice and tips on cooking and nutrition and so on. So we really wanted to create something for the 21st century because we felt most of the people becoming vegan now were generally um, younger people and they were used to having information on their phone that they could perhaps on the way to work they could um, pick up that information rather than you know take getting an email and reading through it. Oh I think Sam's Sam's connections perhaps dropped out. I don't know if you just want to go off video, Sam, if, if that helps your connection. As, uh, unstable connection. 
can you can you hear me yet yeah yeah we can hear you yeah yeah ah, okay should i try staying off video and see if that helps yeah yeah when you're off video that that uh, it can through fine I'll just give her a few seconds. Okay, we, we can we can always come back to Sam when she gets connection. Okay. Oh, oh are, you there? are you back? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can now, yeah. Okay, so yeah. The, the big guide is um, there's a film every day, a short film you can watch that's just a few minutes that introduces a different topic, a different aspect of veganism. Um, and um, there's then some resources linked from that. You also, when you log on to the V-Guide originally, you say what's motivating you to become vegan, whether that's um, environment, health or animal rights. And every day there's a sort of um, inspirational quote for you to keep you on, to keep you um, going. Um, as, you, as you travel through your journey, there's a sunflower that grows each day as you pass each of your 30 days. Um, there's a, a quiz to do every day to check your learning. That opens up other resources such as um, the, um, the recipes and um, other nutritional information. Um, there are some sort of um, veg answers which are um, clarifying or explaining tricky areas of veganism like what do you say to people who say um, what would you do if you're on a desert island and um, there was nothing to eat but animals. So we give you the answers to those questions, that kind of help oh, and really? advice. Um, so that, but the idea behind it is at the end of your 30 days really you probably know pretty much everything you need to know to, to go vegan um, safely and happily um, and, and to be a really good advocate for veganism. And, and, and is that, uh, that, that's on a smartphone app and is, it, is that free is it Sam? Yes that's right you can download it free of charge from uh, for both iPhone and Android if you just go to your um, just, just go, go to the platform and um, you can download it free. Excellent thank you. And, and is it, uh, I know Animal Aid uh, have had various pledges and, and support campaigns in the past. Is there anything uh, you'd like to share with everybody that Animal Aid uh, can help in assisting people to transition to veganism? Yeah, of course. So one of our main initiatives has been the Summer Vegan Pledge, which takes place every June and gives people really sort of intensive support um, in going vegan. And that was sort of intended really to complement um, Veganuary, which obviously happens sort of at the beginning of the year. But for people who are looking to go vegan at another time of year, um, we wanted to provide that intensive support. And we felt that the summer was a particularly sort of logical time to do that with people sort of perhaps um, eating lighter foods and um, potentially having a little bit bit more time to um, think about sort of eating differently and so on. Um, so that runs on a, a yearly basis um, but what we also do is provide um, our vegan pack throughout the year which previously we were willing to send out by post obviously due to the lockdown situation that's now entirely digital um, but that provides really useful information on sort of resources um, general question FAQ type questions you might have uh, recipes and so on so that's a really good resource. And then we also provide some specific resources as well. So we've um, got one for plant-based cooking on a budget, which is um, a particularly useful one. We've just revised and updated our vegan guide for students as well. Um, so that's sort of particularly adapted for their needs as well. And all those resources are available online at our website. And also um, if you have a look at our virtual stall at VegFest, you can find links to those too. Excellent. That, that's great. Thank you, Izzy. And and least finally, uh, do you want to uh, outline for for us the vegan approach and the uh, the resources that we've got on, online? Um, our main resource is our website. So what we try to cover is is everything we've gone through today, which are our six steps to going vegan. So we talk about motivation, and we've got links to lots of other different sites as well. Uh, and obviously things like recipes, we've got our own recipes, but we've also got links to other sites. Um, and we've got links to, you know, the Vegan Society Animal Aid, Veganuary, wow. Viva. Um, and also we do talk about the non-food side of things as well. So we've got quite a lot of links to other organisations that can give you some help there. Um, so that's our website. Um, and I would also mention in terms of support what I said earlier, which is about local groups. Um, can be sort of like the make, making or breaking of sort of, you know, keeping you vegan as well, because we talk a lot about going vegan, but it's also about staying vegan as well. And sometimes people particularly live in sort of areas where there aren't as many vegans often need the support of other vegans around them 
um, to help them keep them vegan as well. So local groups are great. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's one thing for me as well. Our, our local group in Exeter uh, provides a, a lot of support as well. And we've got website and, and, and social media as well. So I'd certainly encourage people to, uh, to look their local group up. That's lovely. Th thank you everybody for, for uh, the comprehensive answers and hopefully a lot of our participants have, have got a lot out of those answers today. We've, we've just had three uh, questions coming through the, uh, through the live Q&A and um, we, we've probably got a quarter of an hour uh, to, to go through those. Um, first one, um, this person says he's been vegan for 36 years, so, so not new. However, he's seen a fair number of new vegans who subsequently lapse. Uh, have you any tips to help new vegans keep to their vegan diet? So um, I don't know who, who wants to take that or whether we want to just go around. Maybe Sam, would you like to start with that one? Um, yeah, I think it's all about motivation, really. Um, obviously, we, we all come across um, moments in our life that are more difficult than others to find something to eat. Um, there are still areas that are problematic. We've noticed that, um, for example, it can be difficult when you're traveling. Um, obviously, not as, as prevalent at the moment because people are somewhat limited in travel, but certainly when people are relying on trains, planes um, and um, service stations, those can be particular black spots for finding something suitable to eat so I, I you know people are often challenged I think um, and also by leading busy lives but it's key to find find some motivation and that's one of the reasons with the v-guide that we ask people about what inspired them to go vegan in the first place so mm. that they can get some sort of inspirational um, quotes or facts or figures every day um, that reminds them why they should should be vegan um, and I think it's about finding that in, in other aspects of life as well whether that's um, from influencers, vegan influencers that you follow or films that you watch on Netflix. Um, there are, you know, quite a few uh, well-known um, uh, films that are quite inspirational. And I think it's about finding, finding resources, finding things that inspire you and remind you why you do this. Perhaps reaching out to, you know, going to local um, animal sanctuaries, farmed up animal sanctuaries where you can connect with animals, perhaps if that's your motivation to realise um, what it is that you're doing and the difference you're making, but it's it's about connecting with with those things. We're about to launch a new campaign um, in September, which is called Future Normal, and it's quite an exciting sort of um, animal rights-based campaign, and that's about trying to connect people with animals, and um, we think that will act as a, uh, we've got a lot of resources that will be launched on our website that hopefully will really connect people um, around the animal aspect as well. Excellent. An easy for from, from yourself and, and Animal Aid? I think those are really good tips. I was going to mention actually that the um, the Animal Sanctuary one I think is absolutely key because once you've gone and actually sort of interacted with those animals, if animal rights is your motivation as it is for a lot of people, um, it's very difficult to sort of go back from that. Um, and I think it's it, the fundamental change sort of happens when you stop seeing those animal products as food. It doesn't really occur to you that you would want to eat them because you reach a point when you just it would be completely um, unthinkable that you would want to eat them. You sort of get to that stage. And I think that sort of interacting with animals is one of the ways that you can reach that stage quicker. Um, I guess the other thing as well, just to say, is that if people um, do have lapses, kind of particularly in the early days, not to be too hard on themselves and to think that they've sort of tried and failed and that's it. Um, don't worry, just go back to, to trying veganism, carry on. Everybody makes slip ups, even experienced vegans end up eating things that turn out to have animal products in. So don't sort of be too hard on yourself, just go back to it and carry on. Don't think that it's sort of a thing that if you ever lapse, that's it and you, you can't do it again. Just just go back to it and, and carry on really. Yeah. Now that's good and and finally from you Liz and anything? Um, well I've been thinking about this quite a bit about how I'd answer this because I was going to talk about health first but I think for me the motivating factor um, has always been the animals and I've seen um, knowing about what goes on inside factory farms and inside slaughterhouses and, and to see those images I think I've always got an image of, of a slaughterhouse and an animal being killed and whenever it gets difficult for me, you know, I'm somewhere in the middle of nowhere and I can only get a packet of crisps. I've just got that Im image in front of me and I think it's back to the motivation again. I think I would never ever knowingly um, eat an animal knowing what they have to go through. So that's, that's what's motivating me. Yeah, yeah, 
and, and I think I'm tempted to agree that sometimes if you are really stuck and there's a vending machine with the, a pack of plain crisps in it, you, you do have to remind yourself of that, don't you? And, and, and do that. So, um, yeah, a couple of questions we'll probably take uh, offline. Uh, but th there's one, and I think this is probably the, one of the most commonly asked questions um, that's coming from somebody. Uh, so his question is about cheese. Uh, he's uh, tried a few, but they're not the same taste as dairy cheese. Uh, do you have any suggestions uh, for adjusting, please? So I don't know who wants to take that one first. Any hands up? Or, do you want to take it, Sam? I'll happily, yeah. I mean, I, I think it is a very common question. We get asked this a lot at the Society. Often people are looking for us to recommend a specific brand of cheese that will meet their requirements. I think the truth of the matter is, although some products are more palatable than others, at the end of the day, if you've, if you've been eating dairy products and cheese um, very recently, if you've just become vegan, <clears throat> then you will see a difference. You, you will taste the difference and there's a difference in texture as well. Um, so I think the key thing that probably does make a difference, and it may not be the answer that the person asking the question wants to hear, but it's probably to stop eating any form of cheese for a while. Mm. You basically need to forget um, what dairy cheese tastes like and what its texture's like. And then when you come back to vegan cheeses, there will be a different sort of product that will be something that vaguely reminds you of cheese, but it will be perfectly acceptable. And I know that that sounds, um, it sounds unbelievable, but um, it does take us a while to adapt. As, as, as human beings, we do need several months really to adapt. And I think um, you have to persist with it. Um, it's about remembering again, what it is that motivates you to be vegan, whether that's health, the environment, animals, or all three, and giving up all sorts of cheese for a while then come back um, and try a wide range. There's a lot of artisan companies out there as well on the internet selling um, you know, small quantities of, of, of um, artisan cheese. So you might want to try some of those more expensive versions and see it as a treat mm. food now and then. Yeah. Um, but it is about, um, yeah, I think giving up for a while, maybe a few months. Yeah, and, and is there any tips from yourself? Yeah, I think those are all good points. I think perhaps if you do try that sort of break from vegan cheese, Perhaps when you go back to it, um, maybe giving it a bit of a fairer trial, but maybe not immediately having it sort of on a cracker or in a sandwich, but perhaps sort of to on top of pasta or um, within a dish or something like that. And it helps to kind of introduce you to the flavour in a bit more of a, a gradual way. Um, I would agree with Sam, though, that sort of there are a lot of products out there now and improvements are being made to them all the time. So it really is uh, vegan cheese has come on so much in the last few years and it really is getting better and better. Um, a few sort of readily available brands um, that it might be worth trying. I've found a lot of people do like Violife and find that sort of a particularly um, good one to try. It's quite creamy without having sort of too much of a really kind of intense, um, perhaps sort of over cheesy flavour, um, which makes it quite a good one to try. I've also found that um, the Daya brand is, is very good, although it is a little bit more expensive. Um, and more recently, I've started to see the, the vegan version of Applewood cheese, um, yeah. which has received a really good response from people. I personally think that um, that's one of the best along with Violife, and that's one that I would recommend trying as it does melt really well and it sort of has that nice cheesy flavor without being too overpowering so those are perhaps some some ones to try yeah and, and a lot and i know the uh, smoked applewood isn't it that that uh, yeah that actually sold out down in the, in the west country in quite a few right. supermarkets down by us so and 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 from yourself liz any any cheese suggestions for anybody um, I would go along with what people have said about doing without because uh, your body gets used to the casein in dairy cheese so going without for a while helps that. Uh, and also while you're going out without you should sort of um, be quite pleased that you're actually reducing your saturated fat intake quite a lot as well because cheese is a major source of saturated fat. As far as I'm concerned I, I don't often have um, vegan cheese at all because there weren't very nice ones around when I went vegan so I have it um, sometimes I've just had some via life this week if I want something as a treat I think for Christmas I'd probably get some thyme cheese if anybody's heard of thyme cheese uh, products made out of nuts those are great but they're not cheap and those are the sorts of cheeses you'd have on crackers so those are really good um, but I'm not a great fan of, of all of the vegan cheeses really 
Yeah, yeah. No, I've, um, I, I must say I don't have much in the way of, of vegan cheese now. Uh, just really the, as, as a treat, smoked applewood and, and BioLife generally. We, we've probably got time for a, a final question um, before well, the Doug, end. Doug Riedel has put a question in. Yes, that, that's the question I was, <laughs> uh, I was going to ask. So uh, he says uh, he's, his self and partner at the stage of substituting out meat and dairy. And, and swapping into plant-based products. We have done some uh, new recipes that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't otherwise have tried. Uh, could the panel share their favorite recipe they've discovered since they've become vegan? So I don't know if you want to go around my screen, perhaps starting with uh, Sam. Um, yeah, um, my, my, probably one of my favorites is a roasted vegetable lasagna, um, yeah. which um, uses, a, I, I make a, a white sauce myself using um, Oh, we've lost Sam again. I don't know. Do you, do you want to just turn your video off quickly, Sam? Just so you get your sound back. Has that worked? Obviously, better? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Oh, I could hear it. It comes back in in a couple of seconds normally. Oh, okay, she said come back to me. Is, is it... um, yeah, so... Um... Okay. Oh, no, she's gone again. I don't know. Izzy, do you want to do your favourite recipe? Yeah, sure. So um, I'd really recommend a website. It's been around quite a while. It's called Parsley Soup Vegan Recipes, but it's just got really reliable vegan recipes. I find the, the cakes on there are really reliable and really simple. They just use really sort of simple everyday ingredients. Um, I particularly like this recipe on there for a sort of... Um, vegan chicken and mushroom style pie which is really really nice um that's just a lovely sort of um dinner to have you know perhaps for a sunday treat or something like that with them um, potatoes and vegetables um i found yet yeah, that's a really lovely recipe and all the recipes on there are actually just really simple and really reliable so i'd, I'd recommend that one definitely excellent excellent and, and liz any, anything from yourself um... I think I would probably say black bean chili, really, because I really like chili and I like black beans and I'd probably put roast squash or roast pumpkin or something in it as well and have that um, on a, in a jacket potato made out of sweet potato rather than ordinary white potatoes. Yeah. Um, so I think that's my go-to recipe. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's also we've got so many resources, as we said earlier on. Um, online isn't there in uh, in organizations and just by googling vegan vegan recipes I don't know if Sam's managed to get back with us just to finish her recipe off I can happily try can you hear me yeah yes. we can hear you now yeah. Uh, okay um, yeah I'm afraid the connection comes and goes um, so um, certainly um, using sort of um, making a white sauce using um, uh, soya milk um, uh, a miso and also um, some anagnita yeast flakes um, or nutritional yeast flakes which people have probably come across but they're a great source of nutrients added to things they give a slightly nutty flavor to your sauce um, but that's really handy um, so lots of roasted vegetables with some vegan pesto over them when they're roasting and um, layer that up with your um, pasta and use a, a white sauce you've made yourself um, and that's that would be one of my favorites I think the other favorite recipes are the ones which are very versatile so making something like a lentil and vegetable base which could be turned into a curry by adding curry flavorings it could be a chili if you add some um, some red beans and some mixed beans um, you can turn it you can use your lentil and vegetable base with a mashed potato topping to make a pie so those kind of recipes where one thing can become several others it means if you make a lot of it one day it can become a totally different dish the next day and yeah. I think that's that those are the real genius recipes that I, I most love. Excellent thank you very much Sam. So I, I think uh, that that's it for this panel hopefully the, the people that have been on on the webinar have gained a, a lot from this. Uh, I, I certainly have I, I've learned a, a lot new as well so uh, I'd like to thank both both organisations Animal Aid and uh, and, and vegan society and also uh, Liz uh, for, for attending and, and helping and also for VegFest, Tim, for, uh, for hosting us in this new area of new, new vegan support. 
Can I just say one thing? Because I don't think we, we didn't answer all of the questions that were put. So I wonder if it's possible for people to put the questions in the chat room or do we have access yeah, yeah. to... Yeah, we can, we can reply yeah. to that. Yeah, good point, Liz. Yeah. Okay. Right, stuff. Well, thank you, folks. I've been listening quietly uh, in the background and it's been great listening to you, especially chat about cheese. I'm just going to throw in a quick mention for our sponsors, Butte Island Cheese, because of course, they were the original ones. And what I like about the Butte Island Cheese is that it's so widely available. And, you know, the fundamental issue is cheese is, is, is violence and um, Butte Island Cheese isn't. So although there are taste differences, I'm absolutely grateful to the people who are mass producing in many respects and supplying the Tesco's and the, you know, I know you mentioned Fire Life there, of course, all over the world, um, producing own label. Now, that's a fantastic development is the vegan cheese, but I do share your taste actually, Liz, for the thyme cheese. Mm. I quite agree with you. That's on my Christmas platter too. Mm. Um, so I can't thank you all enough. It's been great. And I, I hope that people find this useful. I know that there's untold volunteers um, across the country putting in time and effort to helping people transition. It's a fundamental part of the work of the Vegan Society, Animal Aid, Viva, Veganuary, and of course, you know, grassroots organisations like the Vegan Approach. And Rob, as you mentioned, you know, the 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 support that the local vegan groups and the, the grassroots give and the way that especially in this country that the grassroots and the nationals work so closely together yeah. um, especially in initiatives like this how everybody supports veganuary it's it's heartwarming and i think i think we do need to push further i do think with there's an urgency and although we can't allow that to spill over into our advocacy because it can put people off we do need more people, I think, joining us. It'd be great to see more people joining Vegan Society, Animal Aid, initiatives like the Vegan Approach, getting involved, giving up perhaps, you know, some time to, to help with this. Um, and of course, all the work that goes on in the street corners and the activists out there talking to people about going vegan. Um, a heartily big gratitude to anybody out there doing that work and an encouragement for other people you know to do the same and watching yourselves sharing that knowledge and inspiration even though i've been vegan quite a long time now even there i was finding that quite useful to listen to quite inspirational and uh, very useful so i'm sure there's lots of people who have enjoyed that you can watch the recording later it will be available for another 30 days very welcome to share the resources and to invite people along and especially of course if somebody you know is not vegan yet and would benefit from uh, some introduction there um, there are of course all of these great initiatives there to support people transitioning um, and um, that's such valuable work so Rob thank you very much a big thanks to Chrissy too in the background there for, for all the work and for you Liz for your uh, big input on this I know as I mentioned before, it looks easy, but there's a lot of work goes on behind. And thank you to Sam and Isabel for joining us today and all the promotional work you've done too. Um, and of course, our hosts here in the background. So thanks to, and uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.